Good afternoon and welcome to PME Vidya channel. I am Mukta Kandial and you all are watching our special live interactive session that is webinar. And as you all know, first Wednesday of, of every month, we celebrate Cyber Jagrupta Divas, where we come up with different, different relevant topics to the uh, related theme. But for the month of May 2022, CIT and CRT has planned sessions on the theme social engineering attacks in the collaboration with Information Security Education and Awareness CDAC Hyderabad. A panel discussion will be conducted on Cyber Jagrukta Divas uh, that will be commencing from today followed by three technical sessions for the next three Fridays of this month. And at the end of every end of and the end of session of this uh, session series, a comprehensive quiz will also be launched based on the sessions that are being conducted in the month of May 2022. And we are joined by different, uh, we are joined by several panel members in for today's discussion. So let me introduce you all with them. So the very first expert we are joined by today is Dr. Mohammad Mizba Uddin, sir is Associate Director at CDAC Bangalore. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, second expert is Professor Krishna Shri Achutan. Ma'am is Dean at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peet. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you. Our next expert is Dr. Rizal Kareem Barbhuya. Sir is Assistant Professor at CIT NCRT. Namaskar, sir. Bahut bahut swagat hai aapka session mein. Thank you, Mukta. And hello, good afternoon, viewers. And our last expert for today's discussion is Dr. Angel Ratnamai. Ma'am is Assistant Professor at CIT and CRT. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, this session will run for next one hour, that is 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So dear viewers, if you have any question, any queries related to today's session, today's topic, you please feel free to reach out to us through different mediums. You can call us on our number, that is 8800440559. You can reach us via email as well. Our email address is cybersafety at the rate cit.nic.in. You can also connect with us, our YouTube channel, that is NCRT official. You can drop your question, any comment, any queries related to today's topic through live chat box option. So let's start today's session and I'll request uh, ma Dr. Angel Ma'am to commence the session. Thank you. Uh, so I'll be playing the role of a moderator for this panel discussion mm -hmm. and uh, we have experts today to speak with us on the theme which has been taken for this month which is social engineering attacks. And as you are aware it's uh, really like uh, when we when we see the web like uh, mm -hmm. the kind of um, attacks that has happened over this pandemic time has sh is showing that around 600 percentage it has increased compared to earlier times. So we are seeing that when the time is increasing, when people are coming online more and more, there is more attacks on the social uh, space in the, in the networking also. And because of online and internet usage, we are prone to a lot of attacks and threats. So today uh, we are going to discuss about social engineering attacks and its need for preparing ourselves to face this with what is the kind of safety measures we need to take. These are some of the points we are going to discuss in this month. So to start with we have three experts who are going to share with us about what does this social engineering attack means and also how this is influenced or how it is being um, like affecting the education system and as a student, teacher and other stakeholders of educational system, how are we going to face it? So today we are going to uh, have a um, discussion on this area. So I request Mohammed sir to enlighten us with what is social engineering attack itself because many of for many of us this is a term which is not very clear because we are very much aware about the engineering and it, this is really a complicated uh, term for many of us. So sir, can you please brief us and uh, enlighten us about what a social engineering attack means and what all comes under that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everyone. See, uh, to start with, social engineering is a cyber crime. That is the first thing we need to understand. Social engineering is cyber crime. It is not a branch of engineering. Unlike uh, computer science engineering, electronics and communication engineering, etc., social engineering, generally people get disguised uh, thinking that it is a branch, branch of engineering, 
but this is not a branch of engineering. That is the first thing we need to get the clarity on. In a simple way, social engineering is a method through which your credentials, which are which which includes your sensitive data like password, PIN, credit credit card details or debit card details, all your sensitive personal data will be taken away by these cyber criminals. If you go by the definition, social engineering is an approach or a method used to gain access to information to misrepresentation or false identity by using various methods. So, in a simplest way, when I am putting it, so please understand that if I ask you what is your password, you are surely not going to share your password with me, you are not going to tell your password with me. If I ask you what is your pin, you will not tell me, right. So, if you do not directly, uh, uh, I mean, uh, share your password, then there are alternate ways for me to get your password. So, though that, that alternate way is called as social engineering, okay, where a person will get fooled by a cyber criminal in the name of sensitive data being hacked or something like that. So, there are different types of social engineering attacks, okay, and please remember that Madam was mentioning just now that uh, with respect to student, teachers or education com community or anyone per se, everyone has become a victim of social engineering attack one way or the other okay so uh, i'll just brief you what are the different types of attacks the widely known techniques by the attackers are called as phishing wishing and smishing okay now please remember that social engineering is a criminal idea it is a concept social engineering attack per se is not a single attack with this idea of, uh, I mean, uh, getting the data from the user, with this idea, there are different types of attacks that are being carried out by the cyber criminals. So, one is phishing. Phishing, in the sense, in a simple way to understand, like when we go to catch the fishes, if you want to do phishing, you go to river, you go to pond, and then you spread a net. And when you spread a net, your intention would be to catch all the fishes which are present in the pond. But what happens is, you will not be able to catch all the fishes, only those fishes which are vulnerable, which are not aware of your trick of spreading the net, they will get uh, caught into the net. Similarly, with that term of phishing, here the, 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 the technologists, they have come up with a term called phishing with pH, wherein the criminal spreads a net by sending thousands or lakhs of emails to the available email IDs that they have, okay, and that email will create a fear in the recipient of that email. For example, I'll just give you an example. This is long back, this is not a new kind of technique, it is a very old technique. In 2010, a mail was received by me on my Yahoo email account, which was saying that you are there is some suspicious activity that has happened on your Bank of India account. So, you need to set your password, change your password and you need to look at the activity. For that, you click this link, you are seeing on this on the screen, this blue link. Now, please remember that I don't have any Bank of India account. But still I receive, as I told you, the criminals will send emails to thousands or lakhs of the receivers and they try to check if the, if the person is vulnerable, he will reply back. If the person is not vulnerable, he is aware of what kind of uh, emails comes, so he will not respond. So, what I thought here is, since I don't have a Bank of India account, I am not going to lose anything. So, I clicked on this link and then I was taken to this page, left hand side screen. Okay, wherein I entered, instead of Ms. Bai, I just entered MIS and as a password, I entered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't have a Bank of India account. But just to check what happens next. In those days, this was the original Bank of India web page. So, what the criminals will do is they will create the web pages which looks very similar to the original website. This is the original website. And the problem with the users is we are very, very, very innocent people. We are very innocent users. What we think is here, oh, I am not seeing the this kind of virtual keypad on this page today. So, I convince myself by answering to my, myself thinking that 
the website could have got upgraded and the website is updated by by bank of india so i will not bother to check with bank of india whether you have updated your website or not so i decide myself that is what is the problem if you are seeing any change immediately you have to call the bank and check with them or first of all you have to check the url whether the url address bar whether it is the same bank of india url which is which you always see or it is a new one anyhow so what i did was i entered these fake credentials because i don't have an account just to check what happens next and i clicked on login so immediately i was taken to the next page on the next page they were asking me card holder name email address card number expiration date and atm pin now the question comes here is why the bank requires my atm pin and card number if any malicious activity has happened in my account so this is the thing that you are you need to ask yourself why they are asking me okay so please remember that social engineering attack any type of attack i'll just brief you i'll just give the introduction to other attacks also so you just need to remember that any social engineering attack if to 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 prevent yourself from any social engineering attack you need to apply common sense you need to ask a question to yourself why this particular information is asked to me so what i have done is i simply wrote hello mr hacker and some uh, email id which does not exist i wrote and card number i have written 1 2 3 4 5 6 because i was curious curious to know what happens next so when i clicked on continue so it took me back to this original page now the point is where this information has gone which i have entered suppose if i had my account in bank of india if i had entered the original details then my information would have gone to the criminals website to the criminals database that is why we need to be very much careful similar kind of attacks are happening through income tax department emails also nowadays there is a new type of social engineering attack that is called as homographic attack wherein here you might be able to see www.apple.com it is looking like apple like english characters but these are not english characters the original website url is this one this is hidden and it is shown as apple.com because because of the homograph characters what do you mean by homograph character now you see a a in english looks like some characters in a russian language b looks like b in a russian russian language similarly macedonian ukrainian serbian kurdish different languages have their own character sets so now since the browsers are, are allowing the unicode characters unicode means all the language characters are being allowed so what the criminals are doing is they are creating the website in with with the characters used in other than english languages but looks similar to similar to english characters now a user will not be able to differentiate between this so when i when i when i click on that link suppose if like here amazon.com this is not the original amazon.com so this is if i click on this it will take me to some other website okay so this is also another way of extracting your information by fooling you okay and then you are seeing one advertisement also generally what happens is when you search on google in, in, in initially there are few of the advertisements that are shown okay please don't click on the advertisements because many of the advertisements are fake advertisements okay this i am telling you from a blog written by google itself google in its technical blog has mentioned that on a daily basis google search engine deletes 6 million paid google ads 60 lakh paid google ads not a joke right so if you click you may end up going to i mean a fake amazon.com website which is run by some criminals now wishing over phone call they will ask you otp okay some fraudulent calls will be there and you will be fooled in fact you will be terrified a fear will be created in you saying that your account is hacked your atm pin number we have so we are going to withdraw your money okay so this type of calls will come smishing means sms based phishing wherein you will receive some uh, tempting messages saying that okay you have you are you have won some prize or you are going to get some points if you want to claim if you claim you will be able to purchase uh, purchase the gifts or purchase comes worth this much of amount so this type of 
messages will be sent and if you click on that link something will happen a virus or a worm or a trojan gets downloaded into your into your uh, into your mobile or a laptop or an or you will be taken to a criminal's website you will be asked to enter the enter the uh, enter the personal data or or sensitive data there are other types of uh, social engineering methods called as instant messaging i mean someone uh, coming on to your chat and then they are sending messages to you i want to offer the job and you are looking for job at that time so you will be happy that some hr consultant has done that and now these days please remember that in the name of army people are sending messages saying that i am an army personnel deputed or deployed back to and i i want to sell my car because i am be, i have been transferred to some other location and this is army maintained car so people are getting pulled so if if i if i ask the army person the so called army person saying that uh, please show your identity they are sending the they are sending the fake identities also pan card aadhar card okay so the people are getting fooled by that way and they will say that before you see the vehicle you have to give me advance 10000 rupees 15000 rupees come to the location then see my vehicle and then you go so many of the people have been duped because of that dating where the school children or the college children should be very much uh, i mean aware of is the method wherein someone while walking or in a shopping mall or in a public place will throw some gadget like a pen drive or some other gadget okay they will throw some electronic gadget out of curiosity someone will pick up and if they go and connect to their machine and if that machine is connected to internet then the criminal will get access to your machine details we can discuss in the next few weeks when the technical sessions are there on these type of topics okay persuasion basically they will persuade they will convince you to share your information and in social networking websites also like uh, you have instagram you have facebook etc wherein fake profiles will be created in the name of celebrities in the name of big people and there you will be asked to share information you will be curious to join the fan club so they will say that first of all you have to uh, give your information personal information we will verify you and then only we will add you to the group veiling is another kind of attack you have heard about phishing right so phishing is for small people like i mean middle class kind of people whereas veiling for generally veiling is a bigger version of phishing attack wherein it targets the accounts from various senior executives or high profile people shoulder surfing is someone standing behind me and looking at what password i am entering and then there is one more attack that is called as dumpster diving very interesting thing interesting in the sense because in dumpster diving wherever the offices are there for example in noida ncr region here in bangalore in pune there are n number of software companies that are there in a particular location so there the criminals will go and look in the trash bins whether any documents are also thrown if those documents contain some sensitive information they will get it or some pen drives or electronic gadgets if you are seeing that if if you if you are from a from a particular company and if, and if you feel that this particular pen drive is not uh, in use right now and, and it has become bad so you want to throw it please go for uh, scrapping it in an electronic way if you throw it like that they will take it and they will try to extract information from there it happened it happens it is not any imaginary kind of attack that i am telling you key loggers you should be very much uh, very much uh, uh, what is that clear that in public places you should not use the public systems like on uh, on a, a public terminal is there free internet access one machine is kept on a railway station or an airport there you should never enter the passwords for your bank there you you should never enter the passwords of your sensitive email accounts or anywhere because if a key logger is there key logger means it comes in the form of a software or a hardware if it is a software then the criminal will install that key logger which acts as a spyware and whatever you type each and every key will be logged will be stored so when you are entering the password that will also be copied and stored by the criminal so these are few of the social engineering attacks that are presently there recently in covid covid related crimes happened wherein when people were very much curious 
to know how many number of cases are there. So many of the apps were created and through apps, when you download that app, along with that app, the spyware was getting downloaded. People were not aware of uh, at all of, about that. We were just curious to know how many number of, uh, I mean, uh, cases have happened, COVID cases have happened in India and across the globe. Okay. Similarly, there are other mobile apps, who, who, fake mobile apps, which claims to show you the status of the COVID. And then when you when you install, they will ask you to allow the access to your contacts, to your SMS, to your folder, everything. And they will try to copy your sensitive documents. And everyone knew about the PM Cares Fund fake UPI ID, wherein PM Cares ID, original ID was PM Cares at the rate SBI. So the criminals had created PM Cares at the rate OK, uh, uh, ICICI. Okay, at the rate other banks, Axis Bank like that. So different types of similar IDs they have created to fool people. Okay, so these are few of the uh, social engineering ways that uh, the criminals, the criminals carry out in order to fool the people and get the sensitive information. Okay, I will I will stop here. If we have uh, any, if you have any questions, you please post it. We will surely take it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, based on listening to you, it really alarms us that we need to educate ourselves on this area a lot because most of the term looks very new for many of us. Like these are some of the terminologies looks very interesting as Sir said. The term itself has a lot of meaning but it also gives us an alarm that as a public, as a uh, user of internet and all the um, uh, technologies around us, we need to update ourselves. Uh, so just keep listening, like let's keep listening and we have with us uh, Dr. Krishna and ma'am can you uh, elaborate as like how this, has, uh, this social engineering attack has been affecting the education system and, uh, and also during pandemic how it has increased and why awareness is required. Can you throw lights on these? Yes, sure, uh, actually uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes ma'am. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for uh, this opportunity to really address all of you. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be able to do so. Um, Dr. Mohammed uh, very impressively presented the various important aspects to uh, social engineering attacks. And the interesting part of this is that the center of a social engineering attack is you uh, as a person. And it is 100% possible that you can save yourself from being a victim. Uh, as much as he said that most of us are uh, somewhat affected by social engineering attacks at some point or the other, you know, by being careful, you can actually prevent yourself from being a victim at any point of time. So when you look at the educational side of things, um, you know, what students, teachers, parents, etc. Uh, may be facing in terms of social engineering attacks. It's, it's usually connected to perhaps what you're using online, your own social media accounts, perhaps some kind of a impersonation, taking down, uh, you know, your uh, private information and and you know, posting it elsewhere, or trying to um, convince you to share something that you generally nobody would it, uh, anybody would it. So. The, the most important thing to, to really understand is that basically there are you know four signs that it's a scam. Like there are always people that that tend to pretend as though they are from an organization you know. Like in the previous example, they're from the bank that you have an account for, they're from the school that you are studying, uh, etc. So they always tend to pretend that they are part of a problem of an organization that you know. Or always they say that there is something that they want to help you with. So there's always this tendency to seem like they want to help you, but really that is not the case. And this is why people fall a, a big victim to these types of social engineering attacks. So it's always it's always good to be uh, questioning those that are really wanting to help you, especially strangers that you don't know anything about. And the other aspect is they will also take the name of potentially a person you know. Um, so that's also something that's very much part of social engineering attacks. They try to impersonate somebody um, and, and want to get your confidence. They also have a tendency to pressure you to doing something. So they will always say, 
that if you did not do this immediately, then something bad could happen, you, your account would anyway be you know, affected in some way or the other. If you do this, then perhaps you know your grades might be you know quickly updated, you might get some extra marks if you did this with me, I know the teacher very well. You know, these types of pressurizing and you know features are also part of people that want to scam you and want to get you into social engineering attack. And then finally, um, they will tell you that, you know, by doing so, you're going to get these types of advantages. So, you know, share uh, these types of things with me or pay for the service and then, you know, I can guarantee that you pass all these exams with flying colors. These are some types of things that perhaps parents can get really vulnerable to. So, always uh, remember to resist the pressure uh, any kind of pressure immediately like there's no hurry for you to do anything right now always check the information before getting into it and um, and also it's important to always also report so uh, before getting into many you know a listing of interventions that i actually uh, you know listed i wanted to say one thing about these awareness programs I think it's important uh, to once more just say that social engineering is actually uses the psychological and very, very systematic techniques to be able to manipulate a target. And an online threat only exists when there are three elements. Somebody who wants to offend, so a motivated offender, there is a suitable target, and also there is a lack of a capable guardian in terms when it comes to children. So these are the three elements that are actually require to, to, to conduct um, online threat. And uh, children definitely become online targets because they, they um, have increasing opportunities to access the internet without guardians or parents, uh, which kind of does protect them many times. And these days, uh, like we saw, these attacks are getting more and more sophisticated. Now, when we look at the awareness programs, what can we really do to really change this, right? So the ultimate aim of any kind of awareness program uh, is really to help give accurate information and suitable knowledge to do two particular things. One, that information or the knowledge that we share should be accurate and suitable to the type of audience they are communicating to. And secondly, this information should have an impact on an individual's behavior. Otherwise, it just remains information and not usable. So it's very, very important to think about when we build these types of things. Um, and I think with perception, you know, one way to look at it is can you really give the perception of a threat that really um, can communicate a sense of fear or uh, urgency for somebody to really take an action. So this is one particular approach, but it may not, may or may not always result in the right outcomes. So let us look at, like, say, the human anatomy. So there are in the school environments, for example, cyberbullying or you know causing you know such kinds of threats may happen by people that are your own peers or your seniors, etc. Now, if you really look at the human anatomy, uh, we the pre Frontal cortex is really the primary area that is really responsible for adolescents in engaging in risky behaviors. And in spite of knowing the consequences of risky behaviors, uh, these adolescents are immature and they are susceptible to continue with risky behaviors. The reason I'm saying this is so that there are parents and teachers listening to this they can actually understand the kind of process it takes in getting into some of these risky behaviors and they can take action as they see evidences of it. So perhaps you can then say that children uh, have you know, much underdeveloped cortices and they should be the most uh, you know, risky. Um, but what we see is there is this parental intervention to supervise, to intervene, there's always good control. But when there is none, then um, actually you can see a much higher prevalence of this. Secondly, there's also a well-known fact that female users or girls uh, in school, they are far more vulnerable when it comes to a gender perspective to, 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 to threats such as phishing or privacy violation. Why? Because they are very naive and they are very gullible. And also the fact is that they are very less likely to express concerns regarding their own security 
signifying that there is a gap in the perception, an actual level of awareness. So this gender gap is also a very important aspect of psychological awareness in the communities that have the first element of awareness is accurate knowledge. So that knowledge actually should be triggered um, uh, you know, and, and should always preserve the behavior of change. So it's really the personality traits. So for example, uh, people, that, like I mentioned, that are immature, that have low self-esteem, they have a lot of superficiality attached to them, they're highly manipulated, um, and, and they're emotionally unstable, tend to become those that actually cause you know, these types of uh, social engineering attacks perhaps on their peers. And those that are agreeable, that have very low impulsive, impulsivity, become more resilient to such attacks. So it's important as we go through these children in schools, etc., they build these types of skills so that they become more and more resilient. One is to have knowledge, but also ways to help them improve their uh, self esteem and self resistance to these types of things. So knowing all this, how do we really apply these relevant human factors um, to effectively come up with strategies for these online measures? And the types of things to do are to really form these training initiatives that have very different styles of knowledge acquisition and retention. Because really, uh, the embedded style of learning is what is actually useful to change the user's behavior so that they move away from like the traditional group learning in these particular aspects where one safety is actually involved. So uh, the, the different ways of learning is to really give them hands-on experiences, to, to run drills, to continuously get feedback from them, gamification is another way to actually allow students to be able to, kids to, be able to learn things faster, etc. And, and, and definitely more important than everything is actually educational content that we really deliver to these children. And, and these programs need to be relevant to the specific area that the users, users are being educated for. And so, like I mentioned, content that really provokes fear, perhaps, uh, or compliance, is probably less effective than something that is very really hands on. The idea that, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, parents are an important element to this is it, 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 good to know, but there are many cases where children are actually more adept in terms of their skills than parents themselves. So perhaps that that's, that's also an important angle to consider in an overall prevention of such social engineering attacks. So uh, finally what I really wanted to communicate is that we have to integrate both personal and psychological factors to really raise awareness of the online safety. And then uh, I think many times many of these cyber attacks uh, and cyber crime can be prevented only if we are a little bit more conscientious uh, in our online behavior. So in terms of posting photos, pictures, uh, etc., being a little bit more conscientious is very, very important. And I think that we are really developing our training modules or the safety education uh, class, I think one of the most important things to do is to actually also measure the level of effectiveness of the module uh, and we don't just simply take attendance to these things, but we care about how we can actually understand how much they've assimilated by these types of communication. And, and like I mentioned, I think uh, one of the easy ways is to look, also look at peer mentoring. You know, students are very open to this, but more importantly, also peer mentoring of um, of parents also is a very very important thing to do. Um, I guess in this whole approach. So that's all I really wanted to mention as part of these uh, of, of, of the series. I hope this was somewhat useful to consider as we go forward and really design um, some of these uh, modules for training and preventing people from being subjected to social engineering attacks. Thank you, Dr. Krishna. Actually, uh, you have uh, thrown lights on various aspects. It's not about knowing, just having a knowledge about it. As you rightly said, the very important point is about having accurate knowledge of the things. Many times we see that people are not having this understanding or having a, a knowledge on these areas wherein they fall prey to these threats. So as you rightly said, first of all, the knowledge acquisition and application as well as retention is uh, really very important. And thanks for also throwing light on how awareness programs should be created around and uh, what are the aspects that has to be considered while creating awareness program. Because right now, uh, it has become a kind of um, 
everywhere as some movement that we need to create awareness on these areas and as rightly said there are certain essential things that has to be considered so we have also dr rizaul like uh, uh, coming from the education uh, area of your working with cit and a lot of work is happening on educating children and also the stakeholders of education and keeping themselves away from these kind of threats so can we throw some light on uh, various aspects of how the, these stakeholders can take care of themselves or some specific areas where they really needs more attention to thank you thank you dr angel Uh, so I'll, I'll start with uh, uh, defining social engineering attack. I, I'll ju just like to add a bit to what uh, Mohammad Misbahuddin started with by defining what do we mean by social engineering attack, right? So as he rightly said, social engineering, the term, very term itself, is psychologically manipulating someone, right? Manipulating someone psychologically so that uh, that person gives you. personal information or such information that you intend to break out or in a sense you can say controlling someone's mind so that they fall prey to whatever you you try to communicate or whatever information you try to find out that's that's the the the, the basic definition of cyber social engineering now social engineering attack can happen in a cyber world it can happen in a physical world as well for example someone is driving you are driving a vehicle on a road and and someone you see a someone waiting and waving a hand at you saying that i am in a distress so i need your help so can you please drop me at some place so it 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 if you are if you are uh, unlucky that day it can turn out that that person may enter into your vehicle and and may point a gun or a knife at you and may try to harm you or steal your vehicle or it can be anything right so that to me it still is a social engineering attack but probably in today's session we are interested to discuss about what social engineering attack in a cyber world is right so if you see in a cyber world we have we have the gadgets we have the devices we have the applications softwares and we are the humans all the end users right so ensuring or safeguarding the 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 system itself against any cyber crime means ensuring that your hard hard de hard devices or hardware physical devices digital gadgets are safeguarded prevented against any such attacks your software applications your mobile applications your software systems themselves are are non vulnerable or or they are are capable with antivirus and and the very design itself is such that they can uh, defend themselves against possible or intended different kinds of cyber attacks right and the third of course is the user if the user ultimately doesn't doesn't behave in a safe way then the very purpose of uh, cyber safety fails right so that's how it is why it is said that human is the weakest link in this whole chain if you call it a chain of of hardware software and the user so human is the weakest link so that's why uh, social engineering attackers in the cyber world try to at i mean i mean uh, gain access to the human being to the user and try to mislead or mischief and and uh, either either uh, they try to find out exact right information steal your information infect your computer or they try to or to manipulate you or or encourage you or or force you in a way that you 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 go on the urls click on the urls which which have been designed in in a malafide way to steal something or or cause you harm or or there can be different different ways right so every now and then these these attacks the pattern and design of the attacks are being also in, uh, developed and changed so 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 to, that's why the end users as a users in the cyber world we need to educate ourselves make ourselves aware of on regular basis we need to update ourselves about about uh, trending or our upcoming or or what are the current trends in terms of cyber attacks so that how we can safeguard ourselves how our, our behavior in a digital world can be on a safe and secure way right so coming back to students community as particular if you ask me to talk about how social engineering attacks make them vulnerable or or how rather saying how they are vulnerable so see the the pandemic has shown us that 
students also are actively engaged a large chunk of our student community are actively into accessing the directly the internet the whole all of cyber world right and students uh, largely uh, f follow their teachers at times we have seen many at places uh, when when schools and um, colleges were completely shut to teachers where a, a vc was not possible bare minimum teachers used to send through whatsapp through other emails different links of different contents right and and when it is coming from teacher the student um, uh, blindly blindly believes that and opens in that link so so there are two vulnerabilities i see if the teacher himself or herself is not aware while sharing the link so he may knowingly or unknowingly end up sending a malicious link a url which while while he himself curating the links from from a search engine or from the web the teacher may not have identified or or, or noticed that the, the url he or she is going to share is, is is a fake one is a malafide one right it can be one or someone as 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 my previous speaker said someone can through phishing attack can can create a fake email id with email name display name looking like same as the school name or the teacher name and and uh, the young student might not even bother to do the the cross checking or due diligence checking and might end up clicking on a malicious url right similarly uh, these days we see student communities downloading many mobile applications learning education related mobile edu uh, mobile apps they are downloading and installing on their on, on their own phone on, or on, at least on their parents phone so so uh, are are they downloading the right right app or not whether the many of the apps which through pre premium free plus premium model they are go going to offer you e contents or or learning materials like for certain initial this 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 trial period this is free or and during that period many of the mobile apps also show advertisements right so so whether the advertise advertisement that are that pop up on 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 a mobile app are are they malicious are they right see showing advertisement on on selling uh, on on, on internet is, is is not not bad per se because that's a business model but in the name of advertisements as as um, uh, ms baudin saab has said that there are ads as as he, as he said google themselves are are claim are um, sharing that there are millions of fake ads every day being being posted on google right for example when we visit a newspaper website for for many of us love to read about news articles online these days right so when you open a newspaper article when you click on that link you end up visiting the newspaper website so if you if you if you scroll down an article after reading an article in that newspaper you will see many ads sponsored ads right so you, you you might think that oh i i have visited a genuine website so anything showing on that website many of the users believe that those everything whatever is shown in that in that popular or famous newspaper might also be genuine or authentic but we we many at times we fail to or bother to um, um, read that the newspaper website themselves this put the disclaimer that whatever advertisements being shown on our websites we don't owe any responsibility so please as a user we need to uh, do the due diligence whatever links being shown as sponsored ad in that newspaper that they may not be real they they may be simply genuine ads trying to sell a product commodity or a service to us that's fine fair enough but there may be misleading or malicious urls in the name of such advertisements being placed on such um um national level newspapers and and such thing these are some of the simple examples right these days our student um, um, adult adults adolescents are also also into very much of uh, playing multiplayer um, uh, interactive games right multiplayer online digital games so so do well while, while playing such games uh, uh, um, when, when such uh, advertisements pop up on on their on their laptop screen on their mobile phone are are they are they get getting victimized are they are they get becoming prey to such uh, things or not then then there are so many fantasy games coming up online so so is 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 it, is it harmful whether everything being shown uh, 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 popped up as advertisements as links as rewards as he was saying because because betting is is a popular way of social engineering attack wherein they lure the users promising some good or some services as gift as reward in return right so uh, and and then online shopping online shopping if if, if these days um, i have particularly noticed if if you if you go on on a search engine and you search about a product 
So if a genuine rate of a product, a market rate is 1500, there will be some websites claiming that they will be able, able to give you same product at 150 rupees or 200 rupees. So, so you, may, you might be curious, excited that, oh, 1500 product I'm getting in 200 rupees. So, so please ask yourself, can it be really, really possible when a product's genuine market rate is 1500, can someone give you a 200? So please, um, and as the end user, we need, to, we need to do all the due diligence. We need to educate ourselves and we need to safely and, and responsibly browse the web and whatever our activities are so that we are able to safeguard ourselves, our systems, our data, our personal things against such social engineering attacks. So uh, with, with these uh, remarks, I would like to um, hand over to uh, Dr. Angel. Thank you, Dr. Rezawal, for uh, uh, throwing lights on how children need to be very careful and various stakeholders in education are also a factor. Right. And as we have listened through all the panelists, they have all shared about one common thing is that awareness is the requirement. And it is not very difficult that uh, this we cannot avoid, but we can safeguard ourselves. That's what all the panelists have been re-insisting again and again on from various perspectives. So to take it forward, as you are all aware, this is uh, the first uh, month, every first Wednesday, we are conducting Cyber Jagruda Divas session just to bring that awareness among ourselves so that we safeguard ourselves from such kind of uh, cyber safety and security related aspects. We need to safeguard from the threats which is happening in the cyberspace and we need to have safe space in the cyberspace. So that is all about this cyber, ja cyber Jagruda Divas and as part of it, uh, this month, in the month of May, we are going to see more and more about social engineering attacks. So today, uh, Dr. Mo Mr. Mohamed has thrown lights on various Form, forms of attacks which is going to happen but you sh you must be like thinking what exactly has to be done to overcome all that or how to face it how to really safeguard ourselves so coming three next uh, Fridays we are going to <coughs> I'm so sorry um, so coming Fridays, we are going to see more into what really it is all about and how really we need to care, care, care about it and what measures we need to take care to safeguard ourselves from these kind of attacks. So for you to just have a look on it, like if you are um, interested to knowing more, you need to be connected with us so you can visit our web page. Uh, which is on CIT site. When you go to the CIT web page and on the top menu, you'll be uh, able to see events. So just type CIET in the browser and you will be able to get our website, uh, the link of our um, organization. And in the menu bar, you will be able to see events. And in events, there is a uh, menu called workshops and trainings. So whatever we are doing as workshops and trainings are available here. So you will be able to see the first current event which is happening in Cyber Jagruda Devas. When you click on it, you will be able to get all the details. Kindly register yourself. And today the panel discussion is happening. And in the coming three Fridays, what are we going to go through will be updated within the next two days. You will be able to see what three aspects we are going to deal in this particular month and how you can really help yourself to safeguard yourself. And as usual, at the end of the last, last week of this month, there will be a quiz on social engineering attacks. You can participate in, participate in the quiz, check your own understanding. If your understanding and your knowledge is more than 70 percentage, if you are able to score it out, you will be able to receive the certificate as well. So keep connected with us to continue learning about social engineering attacks. And I take this time to uh, thank all the panelists because they have been, they have really given a kind of a good start for this month's session because this session has brought out the basic essential things that we are, which is to uh, form the concept and we will be really diving in detail into these topics and also trying to understand how we can keep ourselves safe. So be connected with us. Over to Mukta. 
Thank you, Angel, ma'am. Thank you for navigating all our learners and viewers to the website as well and giving about brief about the series that we are going to run on social engineering attacks as well. And in today's session, we learned the basic concept of social engineering attack. We started with that. We learned different methods of social engineering attack and how actually we can tackle all these attacks. So thank you so much uh, for all our panelists for joining with us today and delivering such informative session. Thank you, Angel, ma'am, as well. And uh, but. As Angel Mem also said, this is just the start of this month, start of the series, but for the next three Fridays, we will be coming up with a technical session in the same theme that is social engineering attacks. And that will be on 6th of May, 13th of May and 20th of May. So stay connected to PM with your channel and NCRT official for our rest of session. For now, it's time to wrap up our session, but we will be coming very soon with our Sahayog session at 5 PM. So stay connected to PM with your channel and NCRT official. Namaskar.